Welcome to the Tim Booker channel, where the wisdom of virtue is shared. Wishing you an enjoyable listening experience. Today, the book we're discussing is called TED Talks. Just by the name, you can probably guess that it's a practical guide on how to give speeches. There are numerous books on the subject of public speaking, mainly because there's a high demand for them. Topics like university speeches, TED style talks, and the secrets of effective public speaking tend to sell well. However, for ordinary folks like us, opportunities to speak in significant public settings seem somewhat scarce. So why do people place such importance on public speaking? I believe it might be related to the context of our times. Why do I say that? For thousands of years, we transmitted ideas through oral tradition. However, oral tradition couldn't efficiently disseminate knowledge on a large scale. That's why we turn to intermediaries like writing, such as books. But with the advent of the Internet age, language and images can now be easily recorded and shared. Consequently, the ancient skill of verbal communication has regained significance. If, like me, you believe that verbal communication will be one of the most crucial personal skills in the future society, then let's dive into this book together. The author of The Power of Speaking is Chris Anderson, the host and founder of TED Talks. TED is a non-profit organization in the United States that hosts an annual TED conference in March. This conference invites experts from various fields worldwide to share their thoughts through speeches. You can search online, and you'll find numerous videos of these talks. Among them, there's a somewhat reserved-looking host, and that's Chris Anderson himself. He has delivered numerous speeches and has guided nearly every TED speaker. This makes Chris Anderson one of the most authoritative figures in the world of public speaking. In this book, TED Talks, he summarizes his 15 years of experience coaching TED speakers. It not only covers common mistakes made by speakers but also provides the keys to successful presentations. These keys, whether you're speaking to one person or a thousand, are universally applicable. Now, let's explore how to deliver a successful speech according to Chris Anderson. He states that a good speech should adhere to three halves, have substance, have preparation, and have a compelling point. Let's start with the first point, having substance. Let's say, hypothetically, you receive an invitation from Ted to give a speech today. What's the first question that comes to your mind? Well, it's probably something like, what on earth am I going to talk about? Right? This is precisely the essence of public speaking. You need to distill your thoughts and express them in a way that others can understand. Here, when we talk about thoughts, it's a broad term. It doesn't necessarily have to be a groundbreaking invention or an original theory. It can be a personal story. This story might contain a lesson, a vision of a brighter future, or simply a reminder not to overlook something essential in life. In short, any idea that can change how people perceive the world can be considered a valuable thought. Now, some may argue that when you're on stage, it's just an opportunity for self-expression, and all you need to do is make it entertaining. Why bother with having a meaningful thought? Well, if you think this way, you're likely to mess up. For instance, the author of this book once encountered an individual who presented everything flawlessly. The opening was captivating, the PowerPoint slides were impressive, and the delivery was engaging. But the fatal flaw was that throughout the entire speech, this person failed to convey a central idea. He was enjoying the stage, but the audience left feeling like they had been fooled. Such speeches, which have style but no substance, can severely damage the speaker's image. On the stage, everything serves the purpose of conveying your thoughts, and your thoughts, in turn, serve the audience. The personal identity of the speaker is not important here. So, we must understand public speaking from the perspective of the audience. To the audience, what role do you play? You are a guide, leading everyone on a journey through your familiar territory, explaining things that only you know in terms everyone can understand. After listening, someone's knowledge might broaden, their habits might change, or they might draw inspiration from the cross-disciplinary insights you offer. In the larger context, a valuable thought can expand the collective knowledge of humanity. In the face of such a mission, the personal identity of the speaker becomes insignificant. Regardless of who you are, sharing your thoughts in a way that the audience comprehends is the most crucial aspect, everything else is secondary. So, as a speaker, your first task is to find something you genuinely want to express. You might say, but what if I don't have anything to express? If that's the case, there's only one reason, you haven't dug deep enough. 
Everyone has experiences and feelings that are unique to them. Perhaps it's a story that changed you, something you did that others admire, or a peculiar moment in your life that provided insights. All of these are shareable. In conclusion, as mentioned earlier, a speech must have substance. Once you know what you want to say, we can then explore how to say it, which involves preparation, the author repeatedly emphasizes the need to express yourself in language that the audience can understand, and this involves two aspects. Firstly, your speech must have structure. Anderson recommends various ways to begin and end your speech in this book, and you can choose the ones that suit you best. Secondly, your speech should be concise, focusing on one main theme. You might discuss three points, but they all should revolve around this central theme. This may sound simple, but in reality, many people make this mistake. Some individuals, in their eagerness to showcase their knowledge, cram everything in, resulting in a speech with too many loose ends. While the speaker might feel great about it, the audience often endures an ordeal. Therefore, it's essential for speakers to set aside their egos. So, what should you do? The method is quite simple. After creating an outline, cut it in half. At this point, it might hurt because you're letting go of a lot of good content. But wait, there's more, cut it in half again. Keep cutting until you're left with a sentence that you absolutely cannot cut. That sentence is the core idea you want to convey to your audience. Next, use stories and examples to illustrate this sentence. In essence, instead of digging many shallow wells, it's better to dig one deep well and do it well. With the structure in place, the next step is to prepare your speech, and this is the most challenging part. There are two methods for preparing a speech. One is to create an outline and speak spontaneously based on that outline. The other method is to write down every word and then memorize and recite it. Both methods have their advantages and disadvantages. Speaking spontaneously from an outline results in more natural language and a better connection with the audience, but it can also lead to disorganization and confusion. On the other hand, reciting a written speech results in precise language and clear structure, but it may lack a natural flow. The author of this book suggests the best approach is a combination of both. Write your speech, memorize it, and then deliver it as if you're speaking naturally. If it doesn't sound natural, it means you haven't practiced enough. When you can recite your speech effortlessly, even in distracting situations, then you're prepared. The most successful TED Talks, for instance, sound natural because the speakers have rehearsed their speeches extensively. A standard TED Talk is 18 minutes long, and some speakers spend 200 hours preparing for it. In other words, excellence is achieved through hard work, there are no shortcuts. Of course, during your speech, spontaneous thoughts may come up. In such cases, you can speak off the cuff, but remember to bring it back to your main point. This combination of well-prepared and impromptu speaking can be likened to a fusion of classical music and jazz. Classical music is structured and pleasant to listen to but predictable, while jazz is spontaneous but can be hard to follow. Combining both yields the best results. In the end, whether it's a well-rehearsed speech or an impromptu remark, the ideal outcome is a natural expression that truly resonates with your audience. Assuming you already know what you want to express and have memorized your speech, you've completed most of the work. However, for a successful speech, you need to have a compelling point of interest, have you ever wondered why, for the same piece of text, people don't just read it directly? A 18-minute speech contains just over 4,000 words, and if people want information, sending an email is the easiest way. So, why do they choose to come from afar to listen to you face to face? It's because speeches can convey something that written words alone cannot, the ability to inspire the audience. Our brains are naturally adept at discerning which sentences are particularly important in what we hear. When you speak well, your audience experiences understanding, resonance, agreement, and even excitement. This is inspiration, the unique charm of public speaking. This feeling of inspiration guides the brain on how to approach a new idea. Many ideas are quickly forgotten, but inspiration can grab the brain's attention. It's like holding a small megaphone to the brain, shouting, pay attention. A significant new idea is here. Get ready to act. Just as you're listening to me right now, I'm not trying to impart numerous speaking techniques, I just want to say one thing, learning how to speak is essential for everyone. If you agree, you'll naturally seek knowledge in this area, and I'm helping with that by enhancing the resources in your brain. 
In your own speeches, you should strive to seize the resources in your audience's minds and make them believe that what you're saying is crucial. How can you convey importance? Through three means, voice, body, and props. Firstly, your voice should exhibit variation. Your voice can have different pitches, speeds, volumes, and weights. You are the DJ of your voice, and you must control the rhythm. Don't speak monotonously, or your audience won't discern what's essential in your words. Without emphasis, your message will be overlooked. If you're giving your first speech and are struggling with voice control, the book's author provides a suggestion, enhance your speech. For instance, underline the most emphasized words in a sentence, use wavy lines to mark sentences where you need to speak in your own voice, and use large dots to emphasize words that require strong emphasis. Practice according to these marks. Initially, it may sound odd and forced, but with practice, it will become natural. Another technique is to mark the emotions you want to convey. Highlight sentences where you're in a hurry to tell everyone, sentences with a hint of irony, sentences that make you uncomfortable, and sentences where you're excited. Mark them and release these emotions during your speech. This is passion, if you can display emotions, your words will become infectious. The reason speeches can touch people's hearts is that genuine emotions allow others to empathize. Moving on from language, let's discuss body posture in speeches. Some gestures can enhance your presentation, but the author also cautions against being overly dramatic. Don't jump around the stage like a rock star, standing naturally in the center is best. Finally, there's the use of props. Props are powerful tools for capturing the audience's attention. For example, Bill Gates brought a small glass jar with disease-infected mosquitoes during a TED Talk. He released the mosquitoes and said, now the rich people get to experience what it's like to get bitten. The audience would never forget that speech. Another speaker, a neuroscientist, brought an actual human brain on stage, complete with the spinal cord attached. How many people in the audience had seen a real brain before? You can use various props on stage, but exercise caution in their use. The book's author once brought a snake on stage, hoping to leave a lasting impression. However, midway through the speech, the snake slid down his back, its tongue poking out between his legs, and started wriggling. You can imagine the laughter from the audience. Props come with risks, so use them wisely. To sum it up, in this book, TED host Chris Anderson summarizes many practical speaking techniques as the three haves, have content, have preparation, and have a highlight. But all these techniques are supportive. The most critical aspect for you is to be yourself and convey your ideas. That's the biggest secret to successful public speaking. After listening to this book, you may realize that behind every seemingly natural speech is hard work. In this process, you can clarify concepts that seemed blurry before and experience the satisfaction of giving your all to something. After going through all of this, you'll experience personal growth, and that is the power of public speaking. Congratulations on finishing another book today. Thank you for your support and attention. Please subscribe to the Tim Booker channel. Like and share with your family and friends because wisdom is worth spreading, and it opens the door to a better future. Thank you, and goodbye.